I had this really uncomfortable feeling in the pit of my stomach as I was thinking to myself, how did America transform itself from being a truly free country with a servant government where our individual rights were protected by our constitution to being a country that talked about being free but really wasn't. The change started when the Federal Reserve came into existence and America adopted one of the major planks of the Communist Manifesto by bringing to America this central bank. The very same people that backed the Federal Reserve System also backed the graduated income tax, a second plank from the Communist Manifesto. You know that the Federal Reserve is a private bank and not a government agency? No, I wasn't aware of that. It's a, it's a private bank? That would scare me quite a bit. What if you learned that the Federal Reserve makes money off the taxes you pay? How would you feel about that? Angry. <laughs> like I'm feeling right now. I would feel cheated by my government. I'd be angry. It kind of sucks. They're pretty much in control of everything. I decided to drive back to Washington to see Dr. Ron Paul. He had been a congressman for over 20 years. I had met him previously in 1998 when I was running for governor in Nevada, and I knew him to be an honest and sincere man, and I thought he'd be very helpful in letting me know what the future holds for the American people. Who owns the Federal Reserve? It's secret, and we can't find out what's happening. So, but the Congress created it, and it's authorized in the Constitution. The government borrows money from a private corporation using the name federal that prints United States on it, and then it pays back to the Fed, which is owned by private banks. We don't know who all those private banks are. The money that the government is paying back to the private bankers is the money that comes from you and me. Why in the world would the American government borrow money and pay fees on it when it has the authority to make the money itself interest-free? The Federal Reserve is no more federal than Federal Express. I've never seen a full list of ownership for the Fed. I don't think anybody has. The government works for a private bank, and the private bank works for its owners, the true masters. People talk to me about you know, the issue of Republican versus Democrat as if they don't get it. And I say, look, here's the way you get it. It's organized crime. All you do is you call the Republicans the Genoveses, and you call the Democrats the Gambinos. The people at the top, they treat it like a crap game, like it's their crap game, like they're making lots of money. Occasionally, somebody at the table shoots each other, but the moment anything threatens their crap game, they all unite to protect it. They're both controlled by the same financial, economic, and corporate interests. Once the banks get into the picture and they form a partnership with the government, the government gives them the legal power now to create bank-issued money backed by the coercive power of government to require everybody to accept that uh, bank money. In the course of the last century, they have converted this nation from a nation of independent freeholders to a nation of employees, and they're just one step away from being serfs. Most people spend the great bulk of their money for taxes, interest, and inflation. And all of that money goes to these two groups that comprise the cartel and their partner, the federal government. It's not a coincidence. So if Congress used its legal authority to shut down the Federal Reserve System, the American people would be much better off. Government should create, issue, and circulate all the currency. Creating and issuing money is the supreme prerogative of government and its greatest creative opportunity. Adopting these principles will save the taxpayers immense sums of interest, and money will cease to be the master and become the servant of humanity. Abraham Lincoln. Our young people today are conditioned from the, practically from the cradle on up to think that credit is a wonderful thing. You don't want to damage your credit. You want to do what you can so that you can go to the bank and get a good loan. There are no, no people who own their own property, who own their own houses, who own their own business, who finance their own business. They're only debtors. The average young person today has no concept that he's being drawn into a web, a trap. <coughs> like he's in the feudalist system. Only He's going to like it. He's going to think, this is wonderful. I got my new red Corvette, and I'm in debt for the rest of my life, but I'm looking good. 
When a person borrows money, it puts a noose around their neck and makes them servant to the lender, which is exactly what the Federal Reserve System is designed to do. And now our Congress, so dominated by the banks, is helping them to entrap people even further by passing new bankruptcy laws, making it more difficult for the people to declare bankruptcy and get a fresh start, while at the same time allowing the banks to charge very high rates of interest. This is the way the Democrats and Republicans, working with the banks, legally enslave the nation. Credit card industry is a huge political contributor. And unfortunately, a Can certain it be number that, of... It just seems so, uh, uh, like I say, just bald. You know, this idea that credit card industry gives a lot of money to the government so they will protect them even to the just abject uh, uh, disinterest of their own constituents. Um, that happens kind of a lot. The board of directors of the Federal Reserve System is chosen by the president from a list prepared by the bankers themselves. The process of finding a Greenspan replacement is ongoing and is being managed by a small group of people responsible for coming up with a list of nominees. It's important that whomever I pick uh, is viewed as an independent person from politics. If the American people ever allow the banks to control the issuance of their currency, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of all property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. Thomas Jefferson. So the Federal Reserve is actually an illegal entity functioning within government. It's illegal, and what we have given to this so-called agency is the authority to counterfeit money. Do you have any points of view about the Federal Reserve and how the Federal Reserve operates? They just enter something on a computer. Oh, you need 20 billion today. Here's 20 billion. But they got that out of thin air. It came out of thin air, it goes to the Treasury, the Treasury then pays the bills. So it's no different than monopoly money. The cost of living is so high today because the Federal Reserve and the Federal Government have destroyed the purchasing power of the dollar. The dollar today is actually worth about four cents despite the fact that the government, the Federal Reserve, and the media keep telling us that they're protecting the value of the dollar. This is a lie. All countries who have ever attempted to create money on thin air, the, the currency is eventually destroyed. Why did we give a monopoly of creating money out of thin air to a private corporation? The result is exactly the same as, as if someone were picking your pocket every year because that's exactly what they're doing. Originally, paper was re re a receipt which is used as evidence that the money exists. Over the years, of course, the government has disconnected the paper from the actual tangible substance, which is money. So now we have piece, a piece of paper which is evidence of nothing. nothing. In the past, people were able to take their receipts, the paper, to the bank and get the real money, the gold, in exchange for the receipt. This limited the amount of money that could be printed, thereby protecting the purchasing power of your savings. You don't have to worry. That's good, because I work three jobs and I feel like I contribute. You work three jobs? Three jobs, yes. Uniquely American, isn't it? I mean, that is fantastic. In the absence of the gold standard, there is no way to protect savings from confiscation through inflation. There is no safe store of value. Gold stands as a protector of property rights. Alan Greenspan, before he went to work for the Federal Reserve System. Now Alan Greenspan and the other central bankers want you to believe that the receipt, the paper, is the real money. This is nothing more than sleight of hand. It's a magician's trick. Because for them to maintain control over the government and the people, they have to convince you that this paper is really money, because that is the essence of their power and our powerlessness to maintain control over our own government.